Welcome to my channel. My name is Kyle Johnson, but if you're watching this, you can call me KJ. It's been four months since my last upload, and today is a really good demonstration as to why. When I'm not doing YouTube stuff and astronomy things, uh, I'm a filmmaker. The past year has been a very productive year for me. I'm a camera operator for the Vikings now. I had a really awesome feature film experience up in Duluth, Minnesota. You guys may have seen my video, Astrophotography with a View in Duluth. That was a time when I was shooting a feature film. But anyways, this YouTube stuff is all done in my free time. A lot of times it takes kind of a backseat to my film career. And so that's why it's been a while since I've uploaded, but I've kind of made the decision that I want to start doing more vlogs. Reason being is just, I always try to make a huge production out of my YouTube videos because I'm a filmmaker. It gets really complicated when you're the only person doing it. I'm filming it, I'm in it, I edit it. I mean, it, it gets a little complicated. So I want to start doing more vlogs for you guys. That way I can upload a lot more and just give you guys content and, and give me some practice in front of the camera, just shooting stuff and whatnot. Hopefully you guys will enjoy the experience this way you can kind of immerse yourself in the astronomy experience and hopefully learn a few things along the way today's gonna be my first astrophotography session of 2022 it's really cold out I think it's close to negative five right now and it's only gonna get colder and like I said earlier today is a perfect demonstration as to why I haven't been uploading today I got to meet with some film colleagues of mine at five and that's right when the sun sets it's usually when I'm setting my telescope up so I'm trying to get ahead of the game here. I'm gonna get everything up and running and then remote in from my laptop while I'm at the meeting. That way I can hopefully monitor everything and make sure it's all running. The only issue is I can't fix anything physically until I get back. That's the plan for today. I hope you guys enjoy this little vlog style video and I hope to be doing more of these in the future just so we can spend more time together and do some more astronomy. So let's get her done. Today is definitely gonna be an experiment in more ways than one. Uh, I think tonight it's gonna to get down to negative 10 or maybe even colder. And I, I'm honestly not sure how cold I can run this equipment. I'm not really worried about the mount or even the camera. I guess I'm more worried about the, the laptop and things like that. But hey, you know, the best way we can figure it out is just try it. So we're gonna set everything up and see just how frigid this equipment can get. Trusty T3i. Love this thing. You know what? Gotta put a light pollution filter in first. Using the Astro Hutech IDAS LPSD2. I don't know. It's LPSD2 light pollution filter from Astro Hutech. This is a two inch version. I'm gonna thread it directly into the space cap. I found that this light pollution filter does a great job keeping the natural star colors leaves a very green cast which you have to edit out but small price to pay just to have the ability to shoot astrophotography in a white zone like this in the city see so there's the light pollution filter in there there's the infamous space cat Locked and loaded. Whew. Not gonna lie guys, I'm already getting pretty cold. And the sun hasn't even come down yet. All of these cords, they're already starting to get kind of stiff. Whew, it's cold out. So the main goal with this kind of thing is you want to take your time. It wasn't necessarily meant to be that all of this stuff would work together in tandem to gather astronomical data. So Take your time, make sure everything's plugged in right so you can spend all of that precious time under a clear moonless sky like tonight actually imaging and not banging your head up against the computer. 
Also, if you do astrophotography and you've never tried remoting in, um, it's, it's a game changer. You can do it for free. I use AnyDesk and you just have to open up the app on your acquisition computer. Like I'm gonna do that on my laptop and then I can access it from any computer. You can even do it on your phone. So it's a nice thing to have if there's a lot of mosquitoes that you don't wanna deal with in the summer or like today when it's extremely cold, you can control it from the comfort of the inside of your house. Sure is gorgeous. That's where I need to put Polaris. Okay, we are polar aligned. Now I just have to get focus done here. It's cold out here, guys. It's really cold. I'm shaking. All right, go to. Oh, I gotta unpark the telescope. I always forget to do that. Park. Go to. great thing about these William Optics scopes is that they come with a batten off mask. That is a killer feature. Okay, everything is set up. I'm crossing my fingers that when I'm ready to image, everything will work. But I gotta get going and See how it goes. They didn't cue anything, they're just like, you know what I mean? back and it's about 2 a.m. right now I came to the computer and it was making the constant error sound you know the windows sound and it's because the telescope is now facing the house I think I'm just gonna wrap it up for tonight it's very cold uh, I think I got about four hours on the California Nebula so I'm pretty happy I originally was gonna go for the Pleiades and maybe even Orion I, I just wasn't really impressed with the subs that I was seeing you know, when I'm looking at these images, I mean, I, I just can't see anything when it comes to especially broadband targets like the Pleiades. It's hard to get the detail to show out in this area. I tend to lean more towards emission nebula because the light pollution filters do a good job of isolating those frequencies. Broadband targets are usually really hard in the city and I was dealing with that today. So I thought I would just use my time a little more wisely and go for the California Nebula. I haven't shot that. It's a really bright, beautiful nebula. And now that the T3i is modded, this is a target that can really show out now. I'm gonna get this telescope back in and we can start doing the calibration frames and then I'm gonna hit the hay.